Hello. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to be professional now? Yeah. I'm supposed to teach, act like I know stuff? Yeah. Hi, I'm Robert Gardner. I'm, I spend 17 years mashing on people, and I teach you for seven bucks a month. That's right. <laughs> right in there. How's that? Good. Good. Do you have any problem with your arms or anything? Well, not now since I'm not massaging, but normally I would have to rub that. Yeah. Unless it would get too tight. Yeah. When you have problems with your hands working, is it just like in your wrist and your, your palm? More, I would say, in the wrist than it is in the, yeah. in the palm. So you don't feel like tingling or numbness, you just feel pain in the wrist? Pretty much, yeah. or either this would get too tight. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll work on your arms in just a bit. <laughs> Probably what I'll do is work on your arms and then I'll get to your back. And um, I can walk the audience at home along through that. Which, usually when massage therapists show up, they don't have any problems with me working on their arms for free. Not too much? No. But then the extensor side is always where you have problems. That's where you try to give me the finger right there. It keeps popping up. That's right. That's what you try to tell your boss. That's the, that's the energy you're holding and not expressing. All that spa music? How do you even survive? If I, op if I opened the studio for what I do, there would be a sticker on the front and it would be a no symbol with Enya in the middle. No Enya. No Enya. This is an Enya free zone. This is no sail away, sail away, sail away. <laughs> no birds, no whales. <laughs> you have more problems with the right hand than the left? Um. I don't even remember now. Probably so. Probably so. I'll go to the right in just a second. It'll just be a little closer to the camera so he can pick up what's going on. Oh. Soar, what you been doing? I've been running. Running? Massaging. How do you, how do you, how do you run in this climate? Running. All I do is... I just have to sweat. I like to... All I do is run inside to the air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> so you work as a therapist? Yes. Nice. A little tender through there? No. No. But it's, you're not doing a lot of massage right now, so. I'm not doing any massage right now unless it's a practical. No, it's not too bad in here. I mean, there's a little bit of tension, but right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's too What's the big news this week, Robert? Oh, uh, I have no idea what links are on the video, so like what you can click on. But if you go to rgwellness.store, our free trial for the subscription service is up. So you can subscribe absolutely free for your first month. There's like almost 400 hours of my class recordings there. And our subscription service is just seven bucks a month, but we set things up so we could have a free trial to let people sample it. So you guys could check that out. Also, classes are coming up in Chicago, Illinois, Christianburg, Virginia. Uh, classes will be listed soon in Arkansas and Dallas. Houston and Austin are already listed. And then where else? Uh, Washington State. I'm going to Yelm, Washington. So those class dates are listed on the website. What do you think about right there? That's where you feel tension at? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, I feel Do you feel more when I go towards the elbow or more towards the wrist? More towards the wrist. A little bit more that way? Mm -hmm. more so I go back and forth, is that better than just holding a single spot? Yeah. You like that? There you go. This is a, I feel a better stretch when my leg is extended. And then from right there, can you open your hand out for me? Yes. There you go. And you close it into a fist. And then after you close it in fist, can you roll it up towards your elbow? There you go. And then you give me the finger if you want. <laughs> you open it out. There you go. Is it too much pressure? 
No. Okay. So yeah, class dates are listed. Hmm? Oh man, so much going on. Uh, Wendy Lynch signed up for the Time of Size Jam in Colorado Springs, which I forgot to tell Bradford if he's watching this. Uh, Bradford, I'm going to connect you with Wendy because you guys are both running jams in Colorado now from Denver to Colorado Springs. So another chapter of Time of Size Jam popped up. We're just working on infrastructure now that we have distribution and Shopify set up for like classes and retail. There's just tons of you know little things going on. Clay Smith on Facebook says, awesome, Smiley. Nice. So you can see her hand gets really, really pale. Right. You get some tingles or anything in your fingers? Just a little bit. Just a little bit? Yeah. It just forms like a tourniquet on her arm. So as I slowly release pressure, you'll see it'll pink up. And I'll mom just... Mom says hello. Oh, my mom always says hello. Yeah. It's like total difference there. There we go. How's that? Is it more tender than the other spot? Mm -mm. Good. The other spot was more tender. Yeah. And I'm going to work the extensor side in a minute because I think you're having some, some issues in there. How's that elbow feel? Right there. Not too much. Wendy says, I did September 29th, first one. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, Wendy, I'll um, send you an email and give you like some more information. I just saw it go through today. I was excited to see it go through. Um, I've just been so busy working on stuff. Uh, Josh was helping me with all sorts of things, growing old, losing hair, turning gray, uh, trying to help me figure out like... <laughs> Uh, there's this thing in business called automation. It is an illusion. Because <laughs> it takes a whole lot of work to get to the point of what you think of as automation. The computers don't automate themselves quite. No, no. You have to program the AI. Too much? No. You like the back and forth? Hey, Clay, thanks, yeah. for the, thanks for the share. It's not as intense as the other spot. Not as intense, yeah. And then from there, can you close your hand to a fist for me? There you go. Pull it up towards your wrist. There you go. And then open it out. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Robert, what about a, a call to action to share the videos? Yeah, share the videos. Listen, what I want you to do is I want you to go to every massage therapist Facebook group and I want you to bomb their Facebook group with all of my videos. I just want you to share the stuff till I just get banned on every Facebook group imaginable. I'll send it to my Facebook. <laughs> thousand people. <laughs> really? I get What's so many requests. Carolina Cabrera is my... Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you the, the name when we finish. So this will be broadcast, I think, over YouTube, multiple platforms. If you have like a handle for like your Instagram or something and want people to follow you, just let them know. Yes, yeah, so on Facebook. I use mainly Facebook. Facebook mainly? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, you can share to Facebook groups. I was just teasing. I don't want you to give me, you know, spammed or oh. whatever. I'm not trying to do that. Um, I just... The thing is, I continue giving people free information and I keep being told it's spam because I'm always selling stuff in addition. The challenge is the video itself is the education. Like when Trent comes in here live streams for an hour, like you can learn from, you know, everybody here working for nothing. It doesn't cost you anything. Like her. Yeah. Who? Kristen? Kristen back there. Kristen Lumsden right there? Mm -hmm. uh, Kristen and I shot some video earlier. We uh, did like a private training because she's working with me. And then we put that on our subscription service that I was talking about. So you get to see like private training, group classes. The jams are just like a bonus thing that uh, we do. And Trent decided it was a good way to make some additional footage to share around. Tingles again? Yeah. Yep. So same thing. You'll see how it's all pale. Pale, 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 pale. It's just a, enough of a tourniquet where there's pressure applied to the forearm flexors, but the extensors are pressing into the mat. It's just like forming a uh, crimp and a hose. When you let off, it kind of flushes blood through the hand and wrist. Um, 
Medically, physiologically, I'm not exactly sure of all the science behind it. People just tell me it makes them feel better, so I just keep using it. Mainly what I'm doing is working on the forearm flexors, but it's just a secondary component. You'll see as I start to uh, back off, you'll start to see your hand pink up. It's alive. <laughs> is there like a clinical, like a medical name for it? Um, no, there's a time massage name for it. Oh, they'll call it a blood stop. I don't blood use that. Stop. I don't use that word. You don't use that word? No. It scares white people. <laughs> blood stop. It scares white people. So like, I know I no, I need my blood to keep moving. They need to move. I like, you know, can't want my blood to stop. But um, I really chose that because it was like, I, I call it a tourniquet. And the reason I call it a tourniquet is because a tourniquet is how you save somebody's life. Like if they got a, you know, a cut in the femoral artery or something, you put a tourniquet. It's like, ooh, that's good. It's medical. There's a reason to do that. Is that too much right there? No. There we go. Is there a reason you're facing that way? Because you're just leaning back into it? I just think I look cooler sitting like this. <laughs> um, it's always like uh, I'll change my body position just so I feel comfortable. Also, just the way I have my shoulder stacked, I could just stack my body weight and just lean in right. without having to really work right. much. It's like a real, real slow, I'll call it a myofascial glide, like up her, her forearm. But I have to check and make sure she's not wincing over there. <laughs> Kind of use the deep tissue massage. Yeah. Yeah, I get a, a mixed response. I've had people come in and they're used to deep tissue and they're like, dude, after three hours, they're just like, dude, I don't even. Dude, having deep tissue is like being petted compared to what you just did. It's like, dude, I ain't ever had comp I, pressure that deep. They're like, man, I'm going to be sore tomorrow. And then inevitably they'll call and they'll say, Dude, I'm not sore at all. Like, I don't understand. And it's like, because you're using like big structures, it doesn't, it's not like an elbow. Like therapists will use an elbow and they'll just strip like up and down a muscle repeatedly. And it's like, inevitably it feels like it's like bruised almost. Bigger structures like feet and knees, it interacts with tissue in a very different way. It's also very slow. It's not like I force my way in. I just hang out and lean to the degree that she can accept it. Yeah. Like it's the good death. <laughs> yeah, blood stop, very Asian, very Thai. Hello. Scares white people. You can't scare white people in marketing. You gotta you gotta figure that out. Wim Hof, white guy. It's not Indian, does scare white people. It's like little yeah. Well, a little. He's always running around playing a guitar and some panties or whatever he's wearing, yeah. <laughs> You gradually become more weird. That part's true. <laughs> you have to progressively weird them, Josh. You can't just like full weird. Yeah. You just can't go I zero to hundred weird. Things I want to teach. You. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, what's your name? Oh, I'm Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey. It's Robert. Robert, nice to meet you. Nice Are to you meet. The coordinator. Uh, I, when they give me an official title, I'm like, yeah, I'm the asshole who showed up for seven years. <laughs> Oh, I, yeah, I had a vision. <laughs> <laughs> I had a vision. I <laughs> yeah, how'd you find out about it? Nice to meet yeah, you. Lots of stubbornness. I don't know anything about Thai massage, but I'm a yoga instructor and yeah. I'm focusing on private clients right now. <gasps> so I want to learn the basics. <gasps> I just know the basic yoga assists and I'm ready to take it up. <gasps> <Yeah. laughs> ready to take it to the next level, yeah. So here's what I'm going to tell you. If you, if, you, if, you, if you get any massage therapists who give any flack from this recording, just tell them you work at Stretch Lab. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? No, yeah. oh, the drama runs deep around here. <laughs> so mainly what happens is um, I don't usually run it as like a formal class just because we've run for so long. Yeah. So people just come in and use what they already know and work with each other. I'll usually take the new people and like work with them to like let them sample some stuff, have them work on me, vice versa. And then people just kind of fall in like, 
like it was a jam of musicians, like someone who played drums, someone who played harmonica, and they just get together and start playing. Yeah. But if you have questions, just ask me. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you a quick story. This is one of my favorite stories. If you guys, this concerns you. Do you know who Eric Schiffman is? So Eric Schiffman wrote a book called Yoga, The Spirit and Practice of Moving in a Stillness. Mm -hmm. It is one of the best books in English on yoga. Eric, of the teachers that I've dealt with that are influences on me, is one of the only teachers I've met in person. Oh, wow. So I've had a chance to hang out with him and like awesome. get a sense of like how he is interpersonally. And he told this story, and I was totally taken with it because... Uh, Eric discovered Krishnamurti from, I think, his maybe his brother. He found like a yoga book, kind of got into yoga, somehow discovered Krishnamurti. You got like a 14, 15 year old kid in California walking around reading Krishnamurti books. That ain't normal. Krishnamurti is like yogic philosophy on steroids and amphetamines. It's like, it is yogic punk. Like, he allows you no escape from your illusions. So, Eric, as a kid, essentially wrote Krishnamurti a letter. They had the Brockwood like school, I think, in uh, England. And he said, hey, I want to come study with you, like at your school. And Krishnamurti replied, it's like, yeah, come on over. <laughs> So, so, Christian, so Eric is like 15 years old. He goes over to England, hangs out with Christian Murdy at the school, works there for a while. You doing okay here? Just got to check on you. So Christian Murdy works with him for a while and says, you need a physical practice. And then recommends he goes to India. Krishna Murti knows Desika Char. Desika Char, of course, was, I think, Krishna Macharya's grandson. So Eric goes. He traveled halfway around the world. <laughs> Sits down with Desika Char, and Desika Char is like, what, "What do you think of the weather? You know, how how are, do you like do you like the food? You know." And Eric is like totally annoyed because he's come halfway around the world and he's not learning any yoga, and this main you know yoga teacher is not teaching him. Mm -hmm. So he finally, like after a day or two, he got frustrated and he asked Desika Char a question, and Desika Char started. And he asked him another question, and he kept, like, teaching him, right? So he figured out, oh, like, normally the teacher just delivers the truth, so to speak. Like, in Desika Char's case, you had to ask questions, and then he would, you know, walk you along the process. Like, expect it to be taught. Yeah. In, like a, in a slightly different way. So he studied with Desika Char for a while, and what happened was, like, the day, at, once he realized that, he, he went home, he made, like, a whole list of questions, and when he showed up the next day, he would just keep asking him questions and going over stuff to, like, refine what he was learning. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, he studied with Desika Char for a while, and then somehow, some way, was told or whatever to go study with the Yengar. You don't ask a Yengar questions. <laughs> a Yengar slaps you and tells you how it is. He, tell, he tells you, ex no, there, there's no question. I know I've perfected Hatha Yoga in my own body. I'm telling you what the alignment is. So it was like the complete opposite. Of those teachers, I'm Desikachar, and it causes problems in my classes. Because my students will ask a question, and I'll answer with a question, and they'll get irritated. Because they don't understand like, the depths of like, what, they're, what they're actually asking. So for instance, what I see in classes, like I spend time developing curriculum so it sequences. There's a flow, it's like vinyasa. And the problem is, the sequence I do on you, the sequence I do on you, the sequence I do on you, and the sequence I do on you has to be completely tailored to the individual. If it's not, it's not a good session. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, that, and that's a real problem because you have to have a certain degree of mastery to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I have to start students in the beginning. Like, I do teach some sequences, but I respond very, very well to, like, people asking questions yeah, and in Western thought like I don't know it just doesn't seem like the educational system is set up for that. You do a sequence on Johnny Depp. You have to do that sequence on me. <laughs> the exact the Johnny Depp sequence? Yep. Nice. Is it the Johnny Depp from Blow sequence or like you know. All what? the above. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't even expecting you to be teaching. I figured it was going to be this, you know, just hanging out, and then I would observe, maybe take a video, and yeah. ask questions. Yeah, yeah I, I just think it's funny. I, I used that story because I was so taken with 
the, the three main teachers uh, Eric was talking about, and I totally recognized that I didn't approach education from like Yengar's standpoint. It's, and I like his yoga very much, but I just, like when I would teach yoga to students, it was always like, okay, you had like an idea of what triangle pose was supposed to be, but their hips are so tight. Mm -hmm. they're, they're so weak and inflexible. You had to give them enough to be able to like have them want to come to class again. Because if you just criticize everything they did, they feel like just an abject failure. Yeah. At every, everything. Yeah, I find most of my students are pretty good at <sighs> criticizing themselves. It's warm now. Just it feels warm. Feeling this miserable. part does. So I spend about like 0.01% of my time on that. Could you do some extravagant job? I'm telling you, TikTok, man. You need to take out TikTok and make those kids make TikTok profiles and start putting video on TikTok. That's where social media is going, man. That would be pretty. Uh, <laughs> I would be <laughs> Your TikTok would blow up if you had like all those you know, musicians and all those kids doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, uh, Corey says come back to Colleen. Colleen? What? Colleen. So I'll tell you a quick story. I went to Colleen with Wendy LaValle. This has been like a week or two ago. I drove an hour to Colleen to the Time Massage Jam and Wendy and I sat around and worked on each other for about two hours because nobody showed up. Mm-hmm. That's you. Mm-hmm. That's all, that's all your gumption. Is it right? It's just too high. It feels like it's too high. Nah. Wendy Fleur nah. says, are you using hashtags? Yeah, I like this. Hashtags? On TikTok. Yeah, some. Some. TikTok is, is kind of hard to uh, explain. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that I've reached a level which I can discuss Eric Schiffman, BKS, Yangar, Desika Char, and TikTok and hashtags in the same conversation. <laughs> it makes me feel accomplished. Yeah. Yeah, that is <laughs> 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 You're pulling away from her. So yeah, there's some, there's some searchability via uh, uh, hashtags. TikTok has a, like a different structure though. It's not... Man, I don't know how to explain it. TikTok is my absolute favorite platform at the moment. There is nothing in social media like TikTok. It absolutely blows my mind. Have you used it before? I, I didn't know what was going on. I had heard it musically previously and I heard, yeah, 14 year old girls are making videos. I'm like, what? <laughs> I, I played on TikTok for about two hours and I was like, man, I need a feather bow. I gotta make a video. <laughs> I felt like Prince that was going to make a video. There you go. What is your username on TikTok? RG Wellness. Is it? Yeah, same. Yeah. Usually it's some derivation of something like that. They're not exactly the same from profile to profile. Yes. Well, I will say, so I am hyper mobile everywhere. Not even video time as well whatsoever. Like it's actually, I feel it right now. I just got a class and I just, I'm so over extended. Just need to be more tense. I need to be more tense. I do. I need to strength change. I was just thinking, and I'm just learning. I want to be able to. Oh, where she's kneeling? Yeah. It bothers your knees? Uh, well, I mean, quads. Quads, yeah. Like, uh, if somebody doesn't know a move, then the person who knows a move will do it on them, and then the other person will give it a try. Um, although, if that's... So if for the new users that are checking in, what's going on with the, the new free trial? So we have a subscription service that we've had, man, has it been three years? I, it might be coming up on three years, I'm not sure. So essentially what I started doing was I wanted to give people an insider's view of my practice and my teaching and I wanted to make it as inexpensive as possible. So we started a subscription service. We're essentially Netflix of massage education. What I'm doing is 
for seven bucks a month you're getting access to the vault which has recordings from all of my classes private trainings and other you know sessions um, we continue to add video footage to it each Monday typically and I just continue to give people information in an ongoing way in addition to our private Facebook group it means you can ask questions and get answers and sort of interact with me to be able to help you with your education and to do so for only seven bucks a month the benefit right now is we just launched a free trial your first month is absolutely free you can click on the link um, if it doesn't show up as this it's a rgwellness.store it'll go right into my store you can see the collection of retail items uh, subscription service we have uh, you can sign up absolutely free for your first month right there not too much there we go right there Haven't had foot pressure on my arm since November. Some Ashi or something? Yeah, from yeah. Ashi. Ashi therapist, but she never did. She would use her hands. Yeah. Again, still not too much. There we go. So with this, what you know about Ashi massage, right? Yeah. So with the Ashi, with the time. Massage, or would you recommend that, that is not a problem I have. So, all of my tension is in my shoulders, though. Right now. Yeah. I don't know where Fijian fits in, and I don't know its actual parameters, like culturally. Ashi is to me, it's like Swedish and deep tissue on steroids. I'm really biased in that I like what I do. It's clothes on. I do better for like mobility and pain relief in my experience, and I would argue that like I could have debates with other educators. I'm sure they would completely disagree with me. By the way, um, I'm very adamant about mat based that makes me exceedingly controversial in an industry that's completely table based I tell people that what I teach is almost illegal because you can't get a job doing what I'm teaching like facilities won't allow it like you worked at hand and stone would hand and stone will allow you to do mat work why I don't know that's uh, my question too. But even Ashi for some reason, even though I think Ashi is a complete improvement over Swedish and deep tissue, Ashi hasn't made huge headway, it seems, into facilities. It's a little more common, but it's not that much more common. And I don't know why facilities, I don't know if it's overhead because they have to install bars and there's added liability. I don't know what the issue is. I, I prefer this, but what I often hear from massage therapists is they'll get work and they'll say, I don't understand, this isn't massage. And I go, really, what is massage? And then, are you ready for the fun? Because when they say it's not massage, I'm like, well, great, I don't need a massage license, I don't need a massage establishment license, I don't even have to hire licensed people, I can hire people off the street and train them and do this since it's not massage. And they go, oh, shit. See what I mean? Yeah, it because it, it's a different paradigm. It's like Stretch Lab and Stretch Zone and these facilities are opening up. They're hiring people and training them as flexologists. You know, I've been seeing this stuff developing and brewing for a long time, but I've had a hard time getting massage therapists to understand that they could deliver a different service than what they were taught in school. Yeah, I believe it's supposed to be active, isolated stretching and stuff like that. Yeah, so sure. Stretch zone. Yeah. Um, that lady called me the other day. Yeah, she's gonna call for an interview, but she never did. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm biased. I, I like what I do for a million different reasons, but I think it's going to take the rest of my lifetime for even the industry to start to get an inkling of like what the potential is. I, I talk to too many therapists that are broke and they have hand problems. It really, really bothers me after a while. <clears throat> How's that right there? Is that too much? Okay. Ooh. 
Seven sessions on a table, man, I, I would hurt my hands. I kept developing hand pain from like working on a table too often. They, they wouldn't allow me to do mat work in most of the facilities I worked in. That was why I had to move completely into private practice. And that was what led me to develop massage entrepreneurs. Because I was asking questions about how do you change stuff, improve it, make it better. People were like, that's crazy. It's impossible. It's impossible. You can't make massage better. Like, sure you can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't know how far the Fijian goes. Like, so for instance, it's people ask me sometimes about the difference between Thai massage and Shiatsu. And I would tell them that the only difference that I really understand is the theory. The theory behind the two is different. My experience with face teeth. So I put your face to see the like skin. Hey, Robert. Yeah. What's the marketing plan for your personal practice? Uh, so my practice has changed. Um, I've run this event for seven years, so I would get like clients and notoriety out of running this, you know, essentially what was a free event for the first four or so years. Um, I did tons of blog posts, videos, YouTube. Uh, time massage in my area is a more niche keyword for search engine optimization. I just got a trickle of clients and the people who liked what I did were rabid. They just kept referring their friends and family. I had clients and then I slowly moved towards education because I knew I was going to be booked out and I couldn't really, I couldn't work on more people because I had to teach her. So one of the things I work with uh, students on, apprentices, is I'm actually working with them on funnels. You'll be able to see more of this inside the subscription service if you subscribe. That's rgwellness.store. Um, I'm helping them set up funnels so they can run Facebook ads to be able to build a more rapid uh, growth practice to be able to focus on the kind of work that they want to deliver in private practice. Otherwise, it's like it's all the classic stuff. I mean, you can do social media marketing and ads, but a lot of it is just networking, talking to people, and being able to solve a problem. Um, I was the chronic pain guy. Like I, that's what I worked on consistently. It wasn't, well, how long would you like your massage to be? No, you came in and I go, where do you hurt? And then it was like, that was like a, you know, like a dog on a bone. It was like, let's go do that. If you help people in pain, um, I find that to be an easier way also to rebook people to kind of give them a treatment plan of like, you know, how many sessions you think they would need to be able to get past what they're dealing with and work on. Hey, John, how you doing? Good, good. Recently, uh, someone talked to you about when is the appropriate time to, to contact a customer about rebooking. How do you uh, start that communication? So usually for me, um, because I have online scheduling, I don't normally talk, not always, do I talk to the client in advance before I see them. A lot of times what happens is, like if John came in, like John, are you having a problem with anything? Uh, once again, a little bit of shoulder. So, like, if John came in and he said, you know, hey, I got shoulder problems, based on what John was telling me and based on what I think is going on, I'd give him my best guess, like prognosis, before I even put hands on him, and say, John, listen, it just sounds like you're having a little bit of tension, maybe in your rotator cuff or something from what you did with your dad. Um, I'm likely going to work on you this one session. I don't even think you'll have to come back again. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Sometimes I'm wrong, but we'll do that. So here's what happens. After I work on him and he's like, oh my God, it's gone. This is amazing. He wants to get sessions because he connected with me. He knew that it was a quality service he couldn't get elsewhere. And there was no pressure for him to come back at all. At the end of the session, I would likely say, hey, listen, you know, it's a really good thing to do, especially if you're physically active. I know you're dealing with the acro yoga community and whatever else. Um, it's good maintenance. Maybe you want to get a session a month something along those lines but it's never high pressure sales yeah. that worked really well for me and I found that when I was just 
honest with clients, I got a better response than trying to like, man, John, listen, your shoulders, it sounds real bad, John. I'm gonna have to see you like once a month or maybe a year to see if we can get over the shoulder problem. That was such a different way of interacting that I just didn't, I didn't like that at all. It just, it didn't felt like, it didn't feel like it had any authenticity. It felt like I was a salesman instead of somebody trying to help somebody. Yeah. Who are you killing, Kristen? Yeah, she's working on it. How's pressure? Doing okay? Yeah. Just got to check in, make sure. No, I'm not cold. Um, every once in a while, I'll get in a position and I can't figure out why there's a quiver in my muscles. I feel like a little, uh, it's not, not queasy, like a little light maybe? Like in the belly? But I don't know why. Huh? What'd you eat today? Uh, broccoli and beef, like burger or something. Not an uncommon thing for you. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know why. I don't worry about it. it just. You think it might be the energy of the person you're picking up on? Just. Yeah. How are you? Nah, I don't worry about it too much. Since you are the only one that is no massage. How are you? I'm kind of idly. I'm John. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, I so you can't get used to the car. Okay, let me see. Get used to what you live. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to do. And then once I've done that, I'm going to just comment with my forearm. My arm was also like a little like lengthened. I might have like changed my position a little bit. How's that? Yeah. That feels better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made some space in my wrist, I think. Yeah. I would do that to my clients too sometimes. I'll pull their arms. Yeah. And they like that. Yeah. And Go a little like bit that. more, a little bit more lateral this time. A hurt? No, it's Oh, feels good? Okay. So I'm going to go a little bit. Carolina, where are you from? Venezuela. Venezuela, okay. I was thinking maybe Colombia. I couldn't oh, tell. Right yeah, it's, it's close, but I, I was like, I did, couldn't quite tell. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm gonna go. It's for, super easy, but amazingly effective. Like I was using my thumb. Blood on sugar a little low. All right. Maybe. Like, oh, wait. That's, I was thinking, I was thinking light. I couldn't think of what the term was. The technique that I was doing before. It's really extravagant. I love it. <laughs> So we're going to do that. Guys, don't be scared. Okay. Is on your back stretch. Okay. I'm curious if you like to do this. Put your feet on my shoulder and I want to. I'm curious. Let's do it. Right there. Pressure's not too much? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to do better on YouTube. <laughs> this is the thumbnail. <laughs> it's gonna get like a, it's gonna get like a million views in a month. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> if someone was in a different. Um, style of massage, how would they cross over to this? Now was it too much here? Or What's the initial? I mean, in some ways, I just don't think it's that different. Um, so, like we talked about the free trial, people will often ask me if there's table stuff represented, and it's like I still constantly take out my table to shoot video, to show people stuff. I think you just start where you are. You don't even have to jump to the mat if you don't have like a strong desire to. You can absolutely just start on the table and start like mobilizing and using your knees and feet more. In my table tie classes, there are at least 10 to 12 copies of my table tie classes on that subscription. Excuse me. <laughs> Including what we're currently releasing right now on YouTube. Like if you check the videos around this, there's a table tie class from Dallas that we are demoing, like putting out on YouTube. 
So you have a chance to see right. the way that I'm using the work on a table. It's not really fundamentally biomechanically that different. It's just when you're on a table, you can't use your knees and feet quite as much. Uh, the compressions aren't quite as deep just because of the structure. Yeah. So I think you just start where you are. The other challenge is if you're a massage therapist, you kind of have to transition your table clients to the mat. You can't just like, you know, flip and create a completely new practice. That would be kind of challenging. So I think you just start where you are. I mean, this, is it any, is it any different if I was just sitting on the edge of a table? No. It's not, not any different. Not any different. What's the importance of branding your business? I think it's massively important and it's one of the reasons I talk about uh, brand so much. Uh, it's one reason I talk about video production excessively. To, to the degree it probably annoys some people. So from a massage therapist standpoint, without dealing with like Honda, Toyota, Buick, without dealing with that level of brand, just from a personal perspective, if people can connect with you personally, they trust you. We have a, a business that responds immensely well to personal brand. So long as they trust you, they can come in. So I'm a guy. I'm at a, a unique disadvantage in an industry that's 80% women. Women from the public don't necessarily trust coming in to see me. Now, what happens when they hit my YouTube channel and there's a thousand videos? There's a website, a free trial, workbooks, DVDs, infrastructure, merchandise. He runs some community event. They'll watch five YouTube videos and go, oh, this dude's like a consummate professional. I can book a session. I win. That is personal brand. It's personal brand. People in a massage industry context, that's one of the, been the most confusing things to me because massage therapists want to build business. Building business in a massage context is having people like, know, and trust you. I guarantee you, John comes to the time massage jam because he likes the body work, but it's also because he's gotten no me. Correct. Yeah, it's like it, it's a personal thing. Like he and I get along. We're friends. You know, you build when when I if I if I call the time massage jam, what's well, networking? It feels really dry, right? But it's like, but it's just knowing people. Like if John is at the the, uh, the acro yoga events, the acro yoga jams that are here in Austin, he'll work on somebody using stuff we've taught him, and they're like, "Where did you get this?" And it's like, "Oh, I learned it from Robert like, years ago." It's like he can actually kind of refer people, like a referral network. If you say referral network is boring, if you say networking is boring, if you talk about marketing and brand building, it's boring. But it's exactly what massage therapists need. You have to build personal brand. People have to know. Know, like, and trust you to to want to be able to come get sessions with you. Yeah. How you doing? Did you ever take this stuff away? Let's shake. I wasn't locked out that time. I'm doing good. And I'm gonna get on your your back in just a minute. How's the rest of you? You're like it's great. You work on me for free for like an hour. I love this event. <laughs> How's that? Good. Good. Let me see if I can get to the. Uh, your back. Is it more like between your shoulder blades? It's like sometimes it's, um, it's between the shoulder blade and the spine. Mm -hmm. And then at other times it's below the shoulder blades. Below the shoulder blades, okay. We'll, we'll take a look and see what I can do. Oh, can you scoot up for me just a little bit? Even if you were to sit between his feet facing us. What do you suggest for someone who's maybe intermediate? So da down just a little bit. There you go. And just lay back for me. I think that'll work. I'm just calling out random things. Yeah, that'll work. Somebody who's intermediate? Yeah, they're intermediate. They have a, little, have a little training in the industry and they want to start building their community. What's a good way to start interacting with the local network around them? I'm all right. How are you? So if you're interacting with other businesses, you have to solve a problem. Business people are busy, they just want you to help them with something. If you looked at this as a networking meeting, it gave everybody a chance to learn for free, uh, receive for free, practice for free, and a community event, like they could get along with the other people in the community. So. 
I think if you're going to get started, you have to be able to give people in your networking community some sort of value. You have to give them something that makes them want to come back again and again to interact with you. And again, you have to build like, know, and trust. How's that right there? Is that a good spot? So what happens if you lean back a little bit? How's that? Is that too much? Nope. Okay. I'm going to see if I can prop you here. I got limited bolsters. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Head back. How's that? Nice. There we go. Is that a good spot on your back? There. So I'm biased. When, when people ask me about networking, unless you're trying to network with other businesses, let's say you were just trying to build a rabid fan base. One, I knew that the people who didn't like me were going to come get sessions with me. So instead of infiltrating somebody else's event, I created my own event. Because here's what I did. You went and you went, you went and you, you were as weird as possible. And you listened to the music that you like to listen to. And then you attracted other weird people and you encouraged them to be weird with you. <laughs> so a lot of students, what they'll do is they'll take intro tie with me. They'll start a time massage jam in their area when they get certified. I work that out with them. Um, through a little bit of online training in the, the first intro tie class. And then I'm encouraging them to run these events in their area to bolster support for mat based work. Uh, they get a chance to network with other massage therapists and potential clients. How's that? Nice. Can you raise that left foot up a little bit more? So if I bring it up. Yeah, there, you go. there we go. So you want it more between the shoulder blades. Yeah. Now if I do the same on the right, is that good? Yeah. Is that what you wanted? Yeah. That's it. There we go. How was it? Right side or left side? Left side. Left side, right there? There we go. But you should be able to feel not and everything up in there, huh? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, now, are you like, tired? So here's the thing: some people wouldn't be able to do this because their toes aren't flexible enough. I've worked for so long, my ankles and toes are probably like hypermobile compared to some people. You're essentially on the balls of my feet, and my toes are just bent back. Mm -hmm. If it was too much, what I could do is give you more bolsters, and that would lift you up. It takes a little pressure off of my toes from being bent back. Make sense? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Still left side? Yeah. Right there. I would think the client would love this here pressure. Oh, they love this. Mm -hmm. The other part is, um, I could take my cell phone and use it and you don't even know. <laughs> I put words with friends on silent and I'm playing games while I work on you. Um, anyways, don't like, tell anybody. Still more left side? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to slowly work my way up. But we can, I can easily spend 30 minutes just working along your spine this way. Easy, easy, easy. And it's real stressful on my hands. This massage just stresses me out. It makes, I don't know why massage therapists kill themselves. I just don't, I don't get it. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm trying to. Myself, time myself, like left, side. Home, left side, left side, left side, left side, right there. Jocelyn, trying to start a car. Let's open it up. Run it up. Run it up. Run I was trying to figure out why I was this side hurting all the time and I realized I was sleep with my arm up. Oh, all the time? Yeah. yeah. And I have to be aware of not sleeping with my arm up. That one position. So slowly what I'll do is I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to come just a little bit higher. Just a touch. It'll also change the position of like my feet where it's making contact. How's that right there? Still left side. Yes, it means. You like any side now? Any side? It's not as tender as before? Well, it wasn't tender, it just felt nice. It doesn't feel as nice, though? Oh, it, 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 it's not tender, it just felt nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you're working on it. <laughs> and then a lot of people just have a lot of tension towards this top of their shoulders. Levator scapula, trapezius, a lot of this stuff in here people have problems with.
You know, when I go and get a massage, a lot of therapists will work on the back, yeah. but they never work on the top of the shoulders. Yeah. And I tend to Sorry, it's like the, the first move I do like too much. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this. We worked together last time. <laughs> No, I can slowly, ooh, I think a little bit more in right there. There we go. Right there. How's that? Yeah. Yeah, I can feel it. So once I get to here, my toes aren't really bent back. It's really just the ball pad on my foot pressing straight down. My toes can kind of just wrap around, but they're not really being bent back. I don't know if you can see that easily. Yeah. They're, not, they're not being bent back very far. 